Hello everyone, welcome back to VBank Microservices Masterclass. In this episode, we are diving into an essential part of building production ready systems, centralized logging and real-time monitoring. We'll be introducing Grafana, Loki and Promptail into our stack along with Docker log rotation. Let's see how these tools can give us better insights and debugging superpowers. Let's get started. When you're running multiple microservices, tracking down issues across different containers is a nightmare without centralized logging. That's where Loki and Promptail come in. They let us collect and search logs across all services and visualize them using Grafana all in real time. This setup brings production grade observability without needing to install heavyweight agents. So in this diagram, if you see Promptail pulls all the information from all containers within the Docker, transforms any logs and sends the data into Loki. Grafana as a UI tool will fetch data from Loki and try to visualize it and also monitor. Let's start with a small but powerful change to our Docker Compose configuration. We'll be adding this log block to each service as logging, driver as JSON file and options as maximum size of 10 MB and maximum file rotation of 3. This ensures that logs don't grow endlessly and consume disk space. It rotates logs at 10 MB with up to 3 files retained per container. Perfect for dev environments and small scale deployments. So in this case of example VBank API Gateway, we added this logging block and if I can just search over here, you will see we have 12 services within this Docker ecosystem where we have this logging definition. Now let's walk through the three new services in our Docker Compose YAML file. First one is Loki. Loki is our log aggregation system. It indexes logs and stores them efficiently. How exactly this is configured? It's configured using this loki-config.yaml file, storing data locally in this slash loki. And this config yaml file, I really don't see the value of just explaining each and every field in this yaml file. But overall, it's a very basic boilerplate of loki config yaml file. One main important field over here is HTTP listen port, which is listening at 3100. So we'll be using this port to access loki from Grafana. And we'll configure in Grafana as a proper data source. And it's kind of a very basic boilerplate yaml file. And now looking at the Docker container definition over here, we are mounting this loki-config yaml file in this specific location. And I define a basic volume as loki underscore data which points to slash loki within the loki container. That's it. And I have basic health check endpoint something like this. And I maintain the same logging block across all services within this docker compose yaml file. In short, loki is our log aggregation system. Now let's look at the promptail definition. So what exactly is this promptail? So promptail is like a log shipping agent as I mentioned earlier. It discovers docker containers and scraps their logs and also we use pipeline stages to parse logs, transform, validate and pass it down to Loki. That's it. And if you look at the definition of Promptail, image we have as Grafana slash Promptail with that specific version. And for Promptail also we are maintaining this Promptail-config.yaml file. And rest of the volume mounts are actually important because that's how the Promptail extracts the logs from the Docker system. And I clearly mentioned that it purely depends on the Loki because Promptail feeds all the data from containers to Loki. Now let's open promptail-config.yaml file. This took really a lot of time for me to figure it out overall because there are so many regular expressions that I need to pass and all. So let's start from the beginning. We have this server defined as 9080 and I have the clients over here mentioning it as Loki 3100 because this Loki is, is accessible within this Docker network as a container I mentioned over here, right? If you see the container name is Loki and the port is 3100, simple. So Promptel pushes all the logs which extracts from the container, transforms, validates and push to this endpoint, which is a Loki endpoint. That's it. And now we have this very important block, scrape configs, which really took a lot of time for me because uh, this is also kind of a new thing for me. I'm just trying to explore and trying to learn across and see if we can fit this in our system. To begin with, if you see, we have this job name clearly mentioned. So Docker SD config. So this is how we are basically get the data and the refresh interval is like five seconds. So I'm extracting the container name with a proper label. And then we have this pipeline stages. We'll try to construct different labels and also extract some information from different log structures. Okay, I'll go through at a very high level. We have this parsing the main log structure from this regex. So we'll extract this timestamp, log level, service name, and also the actual message with this simple regular expression. Though it's not kind of a simple, but once you get the understanding, we're trying to basically extract this information within the square brackets with, all, with some safe checks. That's it. Okay, and then I'm explicitly mentioning that, okay, we'll be having the timestamp field also. And for a few of the logs, we are logging the HTTP method and also the response of it, right? So that's how I'm extracting the HTTP method and the endpoint. So if you see, we are slowly covering almost all the different log patterns. So initially, we are trying to get timestamp, level, service, and message. 
and from here we are trying to get the method and also endpoint http method and also endpoint and if possible we'll try to get the status code based on the specific regular expression and i basically made it a bit more complex by trying to extract the kafka messages logs also and see if we can label it so we have this kafka topic over here so if i get this pattern publish message to topic with so and so this is basically the kafka topic and with message and following we have this processing event name as a proper label parameter and from here this is more of a domain level if you have if you see we have this transaction id trying to extract from vbank hyphen so and so and also we have this user id account number if it's really required this is kind of not really required but from my learning i try to extract as much information as I, we can extract so that i can share with you and i also have this log type just to identify whether it's a http request kafka event or transaction id so based on these conditions if method is there then i can simply label it as http request kafka topic is there i can label it as kafka event and so on and at the end i'm just defining all these are all the labels i need for logging and monitoring that's it and the output source is default i know this is kind of overwhelming try it out and let me know in the comments how good or bad is this configuration and apart from this i have some other yaml files but i'll just give a very high level walkthrough of it so i created this monitoring folder inside i have all the definitions so for the prompt l i have prompt l config yaml file and for the loki i have loki hyphen config grafana is kind of generated but i'll just try to give you so in the provisioning side if you see we have this data sources this we can actually configure it from the grafana dashboard itself but i just defined it so that whenever you spin the whole docker cluster it's all configured and easy to navigate and we have these dashboards also but i'll just walk you through from the actual ui which will actually make more sense okay enough of theory let's get into practicals just before that so far if you see this content interesting and knowledgeable make sure you hit that like button and subscribe which will really motivate me to do more interesting videos so i have this four shell script just to make it a bit more consistent and try to start the services in a specific order so first time we, i'll be running this run underscore supporting underscore services dot ss which basically runs these services because postgres redis kafka and kafka ua which are kind of actually supporting services right if you are new to this microservices masterclass series this might be kind of an overwhelming or which might not even make sense so i would highly recommend to start from the very first video of microservices masterclass then i hope this will really make sense okay so we have this four services which will be running so let's kick off so let's start these and i'll just open docker in the meantime so i have these things in place but i stopped overall so let's start one by one so let's start this run supporting services over here okay looks like all four services were up and running let's verify from docker desktop as well okay kafka ui and postgres is also running just that i couldn't scroll down not sure why anyway so once this is done we can run actually this run microservices which will try to run all these four services So let's run this one. Okay. Um, yeah, looks like all the services started. Let's verify from Docker Desktop as well, and let's open Transaction Service Logs. Okay. If you see the timestamp is first of July, and we have this transaction services running on so and so forth. Okay. Uh, let's verify auth service as well. Looks good. Let's verify account service. Yeah, I think should be fine. So at this stage, most of the services are up and running. If you see, we have these three new services, what we introduced from this specific video, Loki, Promptail, and Grafana. So we have the start monitoring, which will basically tries to run this Loki, Promptail, and Grafana, simple. Start monitoring.sh. Okay, uh, Promptail, Grafana started. Loki will usually take a while, so let's wait for it. Okay, it started. All right, so all services are running now. And we can access Grafana at 3101. I already opened that one over here. So let's just refresh localhost 3101. Okay. So this is how so this is how it looks. I already logged in. So maybe I'll just log out and just show you. So this is admin and admin at the rate 123. So we have this admin and admin 123. I'm just logging over here. This we configured from the Docker Compose. Okay, so let's log in okay so there are few things which we can do as i mentioned we can clearly create a data sources this data source which actually booted from the data source.yaml file over here if you can see this one okay we can actually create add new data source and create and configure all available data sources but we already have it this it, it booted up from the yaml file and we also mentioned this in in the in the configuration okay let's start with the normal logs how exactly we're going to do 
so in the explore we have this loki let's just hide the sidebar over here so we have this loki which is basically a tool within grafana where you can actually apply to filter the logs etc from the selected label we have this all the labels account number container name top, kafka topic and all so let's start with the very basic as service name okay and maybe let's pick api gateway because all the request routes will be coming through this one so let me just pick five minutes and run query if you see it's clearly evident that over here api gateway is running and configured proxy for auth service account service and transaction service okay maybe let's pick the other one maybe transaction service over here run query okay we have this setup so kafka logs we can see and connected to redis and so on at the end we have this transaction is running on localhost 3000 and just important all the very latest messages will be at the top all the old messages will be down simple okay so exactly we know this is working properly with all the possible scenarios remember we have this end-to-end -end test cases so we'll be running that so that we'll be getting a lot of log messages and also before that i'll just go through the monitoring dashboard as well so that you'll get a very good picture of it so if you can remember i was always backing up my end-to-end -end test cases because that is very helpful for in this specific cases or any other cases right so it's easy to to see through the logs and all because it covers almost all the domain level logics okay so let's open the sidebar one more time so this is at the loki level okay we can actually go to dashboards if you see this vbank observability dashboard i just created before this is all pretty much simple straightforward so we can just configure over here uh, edit and we can define all the parameters over here so let me just go through this dashboard once and i'll close this one so if you see here i think this is a bit very small font let me see if i can increase okay so, so if you see here we have the service name account service api gateway auth service and transaction service so log volume by service for the five for the last five minutes so this is the current log volume over here okay and we have this log levels distribution these are like it couldn't find any logs so this four count is basically it couldn't find any log level but for the rest we have this 22 log messages with level as info so that's how it is clearly mentioning over here and down if you see we don't have any kafka events activity that is fine once we run the end-to-end -end test cases we'll get some data over here and also if you see we have this log levels classification and all this is all not much of a rocket science we can actually create some more data over here and we can even change and color codes with the specific thresholds and all let's run the end-to-end -end test cases so that you'll get more clarity if you can ju just remember these numbers 9449 and 422 something like this but when we run this end-to-end -end test cases this monitoring numbers will be a bit high so let's run the end-to-end -end test cases so in this new shell let's run npm run test that's it okay now if you see for the, all the new viewers it might be a bit uh, tricky or overwhelming but i just have this end-to-end -end test cases which covers our entire microservices the core microservices the very base business logic which covers almost all the scenarios okay now this usually this complete flow test will uh, will take a while because it's a banking application and i'm basically relying on this external transfers and all that stuff okay so if you see 36 test cases passed now let's jump back and try to refresh okay there you go wow we got a lot of uh, numbers in red color as well but if you see in real time so we can actually focus on specific uh, service itself in this dashboard if you see i'll just try to zoom in you see we have this transaction service 124 api gateway 123 account services 118 so let me just go back to the normal zoom maybe i'll just try to decrease the range to five minutes okay so this is like log volume by service don't worry about these numbers in red color the reason it is showing in red because if i just click edit we have this configuration i mean it's it's very verbose there are so much of details where you can configure but there is one detail i see here i have seen here so if the number is greater than 80 show in red color okay simple so what i can do i can actually change this to 200 just for the sake okay it immediately reflected because all the numbers are less than 200 maybe let's see let's make it as 120 just click outside yeah if you see any numbers above 120 it is showing in red color that's it this kind of a wrong dashboard uh, configuration but that's okay this is just for the visual representation so let's go back to the dashboard so that's how it is we have this kafka event activity if you see here we have this kafka topic well it's not visible over here but if you see we can tweak these dashboards so it's very verbose we can uh, have these setups as verbose as possible and at a very high level also so it's up to you how you want to define your monitoring and logging patterns so the log level classification if you see we have debug logs of 132 over here we have log errors as 9 
and we have info as 244 and we have warning seven warning messages okay this is all at the dashboard i believe this is clear so far that's pretty much it we'll be covering in this specific dashboard so let's jump on to the low key side okay yeah so now let's open transaction service over here because it has more data over here so let's go to transaction service and click run query one hour is not really required let's jump to five minutes over here if you see we have some nice graphs over here I'm not sure if this is visible maybe i'll just increase the zoom level a bit more let me know in the comments if this is not sufficient but yeah so if you see here we have all the enough logs over here and based on the log level it will show the color code also okay now this blue is in debug mode and this is info we can even filter with the error okay so what, how exactly we can do over here plus we have this level and go to error simple so with this specific configuration what i'm trying to get is get me all the error log messages from the transaction service simple okay right now i have only one it's clearly mentioning fail to create external account for transaction this is actually part of our end-to-end -end test cases to make sure it should fail so that's why it is logging here in clearly in error message simple okay now if you don't need this we are now if you want to look at the all the error messages across all services you can just simply remove this one and just click run query so we have this condition only level and error now we have this couple of messages if you see this is the service name so in account service we we got a few error messages see fail to process transaction insufficient balance over here yeah something like this so it will be very easy if you have more microservices so this is how you can basically extract all the logs from the different containers with the help of prompt tail and ingest all the data after transforming end all to the low key and you can use this grafana to basically have this custom dashboards and also helpful for logging and debugging on live environments and that's it with the docker log rotation prompt tail low key and grafana your microservices now have centralized observability built in this stack is lightweight, scalable and gives you visibility into the system. If you found this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe which will really motivates me and supports me to make more interesting content. Drop your questions or suggestions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.